You're watching a Nova video podcast. Has life on Earth evolved as Charles Darwin imagined? Evidence continues to emerge, this time from the far reaches of the Canadian Arctic, as we see in this clip from Nova. Darwin believed that evidence for his idea of common ancestry would be unearthed in the form of transitional fossils. For example, if over millions of years, fish gave rise to land animals, as evolutionary theory predicts, we should find fossils of extinct creatures that are part fish and part land animal. In 1999, paleontologist Neil Shubin and his colleagues set out to find just such a creature. What evolution enables us to do is to make specific predictions about what we should find in the fossil record. The prediction in this case is clear cut. That is, if we go to rocks of the right age and the rocks of the right type, we should find transitions between two great forms of life, between fish and amphibian. Many scientists think life began in the water at least three and a half billion years ago. More recently, about 375 million years ago, the tree of life branched as primitive fish evolved into amphibians, such as today's frogs and salamanders, which live part of their lives on land. Armed with this prediction, Shubin and his colleagues organized an expedition to one of the most desolate places on Earth, the Canadian Arctic, about 500 miles from the North Pole where rocks of just the right age are exposed. Here, they hope to fill a gap in the branch of the evolutionary tree that leads from primitive fish to animals with four limbs, or tetrapods, by finding a fossil of an animal that shared characteristics of both. But after three summers of digging through hundreds of tons of rock in this harsh environment, they had found little of interest they returned the next year for one last try. Money was running out, this was it. We were told this was our last year up there. And then in 2004, in the third day of the season, a colleague of mine was removing rock and discovered a little snout sticking out the side of the cliff, just like exactly like this. And he removed more rock and more rock and more rock and it became clear this was a snout of a flat-headed animal. And that's when we knew flat-headed animal at 375 million years old. This is going to be something interesting. They called it Tiktaalik, which means large freshwater fish in the language of the local Inuit people. And it's one of the most vivid transitional fossils ever discovered, showing how land animals evolved from primitive fish. Over here you have a, a fish of about 380 million years old. And what you see just like any good fish, it has uh, scales on its back and fins. You compare that to an amphibian, you find a creature uh, that doesn't have scales and it's modified the fins to become limbs, uh, arms and legs, and the head's very different. It has a flat head with eyes on top and a neck. What we see when we look at the fossil record at rocks of just the right age is a creature like Tiktaalik. Just like a fish, it has scales on its back and fins. You can see the fin webbing here. Yeah, when you look at the head, you see something very different. You see a very amphibian-like thing with a flat head with eyes on top. It gets even better when we take the fin apart. When we look inside the fin, as in this cast here, what you'll see it is bones that compare to our shoulder, elbow, even parts of wrist, bone for bone. So you have a fish at just the right time in the history of life that has characteristics of amphibians and primitive fish. It's a mix. And just as evolutionary theory predicts, Tiktaalik suggests a tree of life, with one species giving rise to another over millions of years. To learn more about a landmark U.S. court case on the teaching of evolution, watch NOVA's program Judgment Day, Intelligent Design on Trial, online now at pbs.org slash nova slash id.